Hey everyone, Taylor Stein here, Fusion 360 Evangelist, and today's video is really centered around some mold making tips from my latest project where I made my own custom chocolate mold. And I use Fusion 360 for the entire workflow, and I wanted to share some of the tips that I learned along the way. So as you can see, here's my design of my chocolate here within Fusion 360. It's a simple design. I have my initials here on the top, which I imported as a .svg file. So the first thing I did is I generated a toolpath so that I could mill out the positive uh, for my chocolate mold. And you might think CNC, you might think, how are you making a chocolate mold on a CNC? Well, I'm actually using a desktop CNC mill. It's called the Other Mill by a company called Other Machine Co. here in San Francisco. And you're able to machine out some really soft machining wax that serves as a great positive uh, for any small molds you're making and even chocolate molds. So here's the toolpath that I generated in Fusion 360. You can see I have four different toolpaths, and I use all of them to create the final shape that I'm going to use as the positive in my mold. And as you can see in the top, I use the trace command to actually trace in my initials at the top of the chocolate. Uh, for more information on how to do this, check out this really handy video up here in the upper right corner. And after I generated my toolpath, I saved out the G-code, ran it on the other mill, and here's the finished product. So with the milled out positive literally in my hand, you might be wondering why are we coming back to Fusion 360? And from this point, there's really two tips that I have that really helped me along the process of making my mold. So the first thing I did was model the wax positive that I machined on the other mill, and I modeled it exactly to the dimensions in real life. I broke out some calipers and I measured it because I wanted everything to be exact. As you can see right here, one of the sides was 3.012 inches. Now for making the negative of this mold, you need to pour some silicone on top of the positive, but you need to contain that silicone so it doesn't run all over your table. You can use a cardboard box or something like that, but I wanted this to come out really clean, so what I did was I modeled an acrylic box here within Fusion 360. As you can see, I modeled the acrylic box to fit perfectly around the positive portion of the mold. With the acrylic box modeled, I'm able to make it on a simple laser cutter. To do that, all I need are some sketches of the geometry that I need, so I'll create a sketch on this face, and I'll also create a sketch on this face. I'll stop my sketch, and now what I can do is I can save out both of these sketches as a DXF file, which is a file format that I can take to my laser cutter to make these out of acrylic. So with my acrylic box laser cut and assembled around the positive portion of my mold, the final step is to pour some silicone inside. The challenge now is that I don't know how much silicone I need to create the negative portion of my mold, and I can use Fusion 360 to calculate this very precisely. The first step is creating a construction plane that represents the top of the silicone that I'm going to pour into this acrylic box. As you can see right here, I want to leave some room between the top of the silicone and the acrylic box so nothing spills over. And the next step is to create construction planes on the inside of each acrylic wall. So I'll do that here on these two sides. I'll rotate around and do it two more times. And using these construction planes, I'm able to use the boundary fill command to model the actual negative portion of my mold. So under the create menu, I'll choose boundary fill. For my tools, I'll select my wax positive, these four construction planes I just created, as well as the top construction plane that I had earlier. And for my cells, I have two different options. I'm going to choose this top portion right here to choose above my wax positive. I'll leave the operation at new body. I'll click OK. And if I hide my construction planes, you'll see that I have my negative fully modeled here within Fusion 360. I'll hide the acrylic box. And you'll see here that I have my positive and my negative. And if I hide my positive, there's the negative perfectly modeled. Now what I can do is I can right click on that body, I can select properties, and you'll see here that I'm able to calculate the volume of this body. Now this volume is 5.96 cubic inches. That doesn't mean too much to me. So with the quick help of Google, I'm able to Google 5.96 cubic inches in something I know, maybe like milliliters, and it comes out to about 100 milliliters in total. So I'm able to use this information to find out that I need about 50 milliliters of part A and part B for my silicone mold. I mixed up the silicone, poured it in my acrylic box, and as you can see, everything came out perfect. So there are a few tips 
for creating molds within Fusion 360. I hope these were helpful for you. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And to follow along with my fun projects and reach out to me directly, you can find me on Twitter at Taylor underscore Stein. Thanks for watching.